All right, we're out here at the auto house working on Takumi's car. Let's check out what's inside. All right, so this is the heater control cable. You can see the ends broken off of it. Um, they go into these two holes. This switch controls two cables, the blend door and the heater valve. And there's two cables that plug in right here. This one's the heater valve cable and the ends broken off. What happens is these things get jammed up over time and uh, ends up the end of these cables break. All right, so this is the blend door cable. This thing is intact, but I'll show you what it feels like in a second. Thank you to Jeff Lang on the forums made this write up for an updated Toyota cable. Here's the part number and then also the clamps to clamp to the climate control unit. So this is for a newer 4Runner. We're gonna adapt this cable to fit the Corolla since all the climate cables are discontinued. So I'm here with Battle Garage Kevin. So Kevin, you wanna pick up the old cable and uh, pull it in and out, feel it. And then if you wanna pull the other one and compare. Oh man, <laughs> it's, it's so different. Yeah. There's no comparison. So they made an update. If you look, this is um, solid wire just through the plastic sheathing. And then the updated, they did a braided with a plastic outer sleeve. So we're gonna put the uh, updated 4Runner cable, both of them, the heat and the blend door cables in the retrofit them for the Corolla. And then another thing that uh, Jeff Lang talked about on the forums, you notice how this one's longer. So because these have to be bent at such a tight radius, that's how these things jam up too. So we'll wait, we'll wait for Andrew to come in the door. Andrew, come in the door so, <laughs> so I can finish filming. All right, so how do we retrofit this? There's no slot in here to uh, secure the clamp to the climate control unit and um, there's a slot in the Corolla one so we're going to have to make a slot in the new 4Runner cable to attach it and the end piece it just clips into that um, the end piece it just clips into this metal bracket so no need to modify the other side all we have to do is cut a slot in the front all right so I got the cable modified um, this is the blend door cable. I measured uh, 27 millimeters where this thing attaches, so from here to here. And if we look at the other end of this thing, so the plastic sheathing you have to cut off and then. I used a pipe cutter to scribe two lines um, for, for where this clip goes on and secures it to the climate control unit. And then there's probably a better way to do this, but um, I, I just little by little used the Dremel and, uh, and cut out this slot. So if you look, you look over here the cable ends the new ones obviously they a lot thicker so in the write-up it says to drill out the climate control up to a 5 30 seconds where this new cable is going to plug in so I made four passes with the drill um, 7 64ths and then four passes all the way to 5 30 seconds so yeah, we'll go into the car and we'll show you how this guy plugs in. This should be for the heater valve and the engine bay. And then the forward one should be for the blend door. So these need to be drilled out to 530 seconds. And uh, I was worried at first, right? Because that seems like you're drilling out a lot, but it looks like there's plenty of meat still left on these. 
So I'll show you guys right now. We're gonna plug this guy in. Woo, all right. And then uh, I'll just kind of demonstrate. Awesome. So yeah, I will get this guy installed. We'll install the heater valve one and we will come back. All right. <laughs> All right, I got the heater cable out. Don't forget, we're gonna reuse that grommet. Um, I unbolted the heater valve just to help me get some room. This clamp, that's how it secures it. The top part flips up. You just gotta unclip it off and it flips down like that. Flips. Flips down like that. All right. All right, I got the notch for the heater line cut. I wanted to show you guys really fast. So this goes in the back of the climate control and uh, hooks on to the, where that notch is. And uh, these are kind of tricky to take out. So those two on the side, the two legs on the side, you want to pinch each leg closed. And so like I'll pinch one side and try to push it up and then pinch the other side and try to push it up. Um, I wanted to make a note of this because that climate control can get brittle. And uh, that's also why I recommend to buy a new one of these too. And the part number for these guys are also in the description below. All right, so I take back what I said about putting that clip on the climate control. I think I said like 27 mil, putting that clip on the 27 mil spot. So actually what you need to do, I have both of the cable ends inside this climate control um, attached already. And what you need to do then is, um, so I put this all the way at warm. So that means that the cable is gonna push as far as it possibly can to uh, change the blend door to its maximum position. So hopefully you can see it's that clip right there. It's that clip right there that holds in the cable and then secures it to the climate control box. So you need to move this switch all the way to warm and then push the blend door arm all the way to the maximum position. And then that's how you decide where you clip on the cable to the clip and then the clip to the box. So, I apologize, the lighting sucks. Yeah, I apologize, the lighting sucks, but we'll, I'll show you right now. Hopefully we can see it. So I'm gonna move this to, that's fully cold, that's for cold, and you can see the climate arm is in its max position. And then I'm going to move this all the way to fully hot and you can see the climate arms in its max position. So that's going to kind of irk me because there's a little bit left on this warm, but I mean these cables are discontinued and uh, the owner really wants heat. I'm sure everyone would like heater operations, so um, that's just going to have to be what we live with. So in Jeff Lang's forum post, it looks like he only bought one cable and clip from a forerunner just for that blend door. I was really hoping to take a gamble and then also use the same cable for the heater valve, but it looks like it's gonna be a little more complicated. So what happens is we're in the full heat position, right? This arm should be all the way, like you're gonna push the arm all the way out because that's the cable's pushing all the way out at a max heat. When it's pushed all the way out, this, ca this cable sheathing is not long enough to be able to clip into this guy. So we're about, we're about half inch or 20 millimeters too short for the circle end fitting for the heater valve. So I'm sure, I'm really hoping someone can leave in the comments a better solution. 
So I have a couple solutions in mind for the cable length. If you live near like a bicycle or like cable shop, you could probably tell them to cut this off and put on a new circle fitting 20 mil back. What I'm going to do today, I have a 20 mil extra length of um, this stuff, this cable sheathing that I cut a slit down the end and installed. I'm going to super glue these two together without getting this guy caught. And I am going to put, um, and then I'm going to put heat shrink around it. So that should give me enough length to have full heater operation and then get that guy, get the cable to snap in there too. So I know it's not the best solution, but I mean, both of these cables are discontinued units and I'm again, exploring uncharted territory right now. So I am going to, I will get this heat shrink on, get the cable installed, and we'll come back. So here's where we're at. I slot this guy a little deeper towards that square, because there's like a protrusion that sits in there and um, it still wasn't deep enough so that the thing could clamp over the sheathing. So don't cut too much because that square is probably where it clamps onto this cable. So I just cut right up into the square. Um, I put, glued the two pipes together, one round of electrical tape, and then um, heat shrink. This cable moves pretty slick, so I'm hoping that this doesn't pull apart. But again, another way that's I'll, tr I'll try to experiment with next time is to uh, have a shop cut this and then put on a new cable end 20 mil rearwards. So I'll install this guy right now and then we'll go function test. All right, so I got that cable installed and it clipped in. This is heater fully closed. I noticed moving the slider back and forth was a little bit stiff still. And so I lubricated this assembly and it got a lot better. So if this is bound up and old, that's not gonna help too. So yeah, again, 30 years old, um, if, if there's any question, if you see any leaking or like deteriorating, um, Battle Garage RS sells these brand new. So if this thing's sticking, that's also going to contribute to um, th that heater cable breaking or you know the heater feeling hard to move. Cool, I'll set up the GoPro right here, move the slider and then you can see that thing move back and forth. All right. Cool, we'll check out inside the car. Fully hot. Sorry, I know there's that little bit left, but I promise that's full hot. And I also promise that's full cold, so. All right, that should be it for the blend door and heater control cables. Remember to like, or feel free to dislike. I know the lighting was terrible, so feel free to dislike or like this video. Listen to the Auto House podcast. And please leave anything in the comments to help us out. Because again, both these cables are discontinued. I think like all us Corolla guys need these. Um, even, I mean, how, we have like three Corollas here. All, Corolla, all these Corollas need those cables right now because they're sticky. And yeah, you guys, thank you guys for watching.